whatever recording in progress so that can go right. wherever it goes. And it's Thursday, March 2nd at 4 p.m. and we will do a uh, call to order. Uh, the meeting of this this meeting is being recorded by the Library Building Committee. If any other person is recording this meeting, they must notify the co-chair at this time. Roll call. Ed Billings? Here. Karen Johnson? Here. Boyer? Here. Yeah, they're both, I just, I just brought them, brought her in. Carol Collins can raise her hand. Here we go. Uh, Doris Calvary. Here. Tim Farrell. Here. Tim Farrell. Here. I am here. Bern Smith. She's in. Here. You. Uh, Jean Wall. Here. Was called as the mayor is not here. Okay, we have a quorum. Update from Phil. Phil is not here and not in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. So we'll move on to Mike. Oh, construction. That's you. Construction's going well, on schedule, looking pretty. <laughs> Gorgeous. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have any questions? <laughs> How are you doing with I'm pretty pleased. How do you do with the decorative lighting? You know, there was, there was a little bit of a delay on that. On what? The decorative lighting? Or was it the emergency lighting that was... Uh, it, it, some of it's emergency lighting, some of it's... Non emergency, mm -hmm. but it's, it has been shipped. Not sure when coming in, but uh, there shouldn't be any issue in regards to completion, mm -hmm. substation okay. completion. Okay. Drawings okay. down, mm -hmm. down, ceiling grids going in, mm -hmm. no works going in, just some fine tuning, policing. Looks great. All good. All good. <laughs> That's good. Eversource pulled their cables, waiting for the transformer to be dropped. So when do you think that's going to happen? Hopefully this week. <laughs> so, so might we see actually? They're, the, they're in the manhole, splicing the line, so good. We, we should have power hopefully by the end of this week. So that's tomorrow. Well, that's right, it is tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> Maybe by the beginning of March. <laughs> <laughs> you can know, jump down the mic no and splice with them. I'm there. <laughs> um, Maybe when will we actually, because um, Dan said they're going to do some testing of lights so we would see lights at night. Do you have an idea when that will start and we'll see the building sort of lit up in the evening? We get permanent power. Which is roughly next week? Well, I forgot it was Thursday, so I would say sometime next week. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, it just it put the kibosh on it. <laughs> <clears throat> Nothing else. We will move on to the invoice, invoice number 20 to D.A. Sullivan for 675535 and 96 cents. We do minutes? Oh, we did not. Minutes? We did not. Yes, so, I'm sorry. I sent out. Yeah, we didn't send them out. We didn't, we didn't vote on them. So why don't we go back? Yeah. Is there a motion to accept the minutes? So move. I'll second. Both of them? Oh, you have, yeah, you have March 2nd. Both of them? Oh, yeah. Both, can both we do both together? Yeah, yeah, we can do okay. both together. Then I'll take my agenda back. There you go. <laughs> I mean, uh, yes. What were the dates? February second and ninth. Right. February second, February ninth. Okay. So motion is made and seconded to approve the minutes. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, okay. Opposed. Okay. Thank you. Abstain. You abstained. Wasn't here. And so we have the motion for. Do we have a motion for six seventy five five thirty five ninety six? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. okay. Any questions on this payment? No, I, I was channeling my inner fern when I said, I'm liking seeing those 100%, 100%, 100%. It's amazing. It really yeah. is amazing. It feels really good. Yeah. And good. most of the ones that don't feel the 100% are like cleanup. <laughs> no. All right. The tail end. So if nothing else, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Donor wall artwork presentation by Jean Canteen. I know you all have this. Mm -hmm. You have all seen it? Yeah, I have seen it. I don't have that, but I have seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, I don't have it. Thank you. you. you like, yeah. Hey, can you hear her? Can you hear her, Jean? Can you guys hear Jean? Carol and Fern, can you hear Jean? 
No. Probably not. Let me know. You want to? Yeah, right. Come on up. You know, show over there. But show here. Okay. Yeah, that's like a side. Gene, can we um, actually put you on hold because Phil just popped in? Sure. So we can have we can go, go back to yeah, you can stay there. We can go back to the uh, Phil and and Phil is first on the agenda. Well, do you have any updates for us that you'd like to share? Or um, it's been a little while since I've been on site. Um, uh, you say whatever Mike says. So, but whatever Mike says. Is, uh, <laughs> um, no, I'm. I am. I, I got to tell you, folks. I am very happy with the progress. The way I've seen it, I, I read the reports uh, that 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 Toby put out on a pretty regular basis. They come with photographs. Um, I'm always kind of keeping up on that. I'm very happy with the way that things look out there. I hope that you are too. Um, I'm excited. It's you know starting to really look like a building out there, um, and it's uh, that finishes I think right up around the corner. We asked Phil to talk about. Um, oh, the plaque. That's right. That's right. We have on the agenda, Phil, uh, voting on the plaque. Yes, the historical so plaque. I think you all have seen the um, the the plaque itself. I believe I'm just gonna see if I can share my screen here. Uh, I need permission to do that by the host. Well then, go to participants. I'm in the participants. <laughs> yeah. And then there should be a, like three dots next to his name, and you can make him a co-host. There's not three dots. You can do it if you go on to Amy. Amy, go hmm. on to the steering pad. On the steering pad for the for the town, it should be under um, participants. Yep. And if it's not under that, then it's under. Yeah. He's he should you should have gotten an, an invitation Sorry, to the host. Yes, Phil. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Rachel. Got your back. Always. Uh, no, he's not. No, he's looking. <laughs> <laughs> he's not frozen. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking very intense. Uh, yeah, all right. First time I'm trying to do that on this live. So, um, <laughs> looks like I'm going to have to jump back in. I'll be. Uh, I'll try to chime in again in a minute. Sorry. Please oh. hold. <laughs> You'll have to make him a co-host. I love that. technology uh, for meetings. <laughs> now, if he was sitting right here, I went like this. <laughs> <laughs> right. We have to decide what the thing is going to be made out of. That's it. We have to um, approve the wording of it, which everybody was sent. And then the other is no decision was made about where it's actually going to be. Right. So... Um, Bill needs to know the answer um, to right away, for sure. So this is your last chance. If you don't like what it, what your name looks like on there, <laughs> you have to tell me now so that I can use an alias. It's it spelled right. Um, if I don't hear from you by tomorrow, I'm going to say okay. Here it is. There it is. I wanted my name above Ed's. Alphabetical order. <laughs> 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 you can discuss that with Ed. <laughs> so that's that's pretty much what the plaque will look like. Um, it, it's um, it's two foot six high and, and, and three feet wide. So that's that's about this big. Uh, <laughs> it's all uh, up there in that little box. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Three feet wide is as wide as kind of a standard door. Um, and that give you an idea of the width of it. Uh, it's going to be a pretty good size. So you'll have good uh, visibility on the, on the lettering and so forth. But this is the, this is the way it's, it's laid out right now. Basically everything you see in the, in black on, on this drawing will be raised um, on a bronze plaque. And then, and then in the background will be um, darkened um, kind of a, kind of a antique bronze. 
And then the, the high, the highlights will be um, polished. So they shine. And so we've got an example of something like that looks like. And so that's a bronze black, actually um, it's this, in this case, it's sitting on the grass because it's got great light. And so you could, you could see what it looks like. Um, but this is the kind of thing that you'll see. Uh, that's the kind of detail shows up in the artwork. Um, this is the kind of detail we can get in the, in the lettering and so forth. So it reads pretty well. And, um, and the, the lettering that we have on your plaque is actually uh, a little bit larger than, than this here um, relative to the overall size of it. So I think you're gonna be able to read this pretty well. So there's a couple of different options. We had originally showed uh, glass, I think on the documents and folks didn't like that idea so much. And so the other options are, are bronze, which is I'm showing you here. You could also do aluminum. Now, the difference with aluminum is that aluminum would be a negative of this. Basically, they, they put a, an etching solution on there for, for, the, for aluminum, and it would um, and the numbers would get kind of etched in. It's a little bit more kind of corporate looking, not as nice, I think. You could fill the letters with different paint colors and so forth. So um, it doesn't really look like a... A traditional metal sign. Uh, lots of folks walking up to an aluminum sign wouldn't really be able to tell the difference between that and any other painted sign. So this isn't going to give you a much more of a traditional look with the bronze. Okay. So I move that the sign be made out of bronze. Is there a second? I would second that. Is there any discussion on this? Yes. I'd like to discuss this. Okay. I, I um. I think the bronze is beautiful. I think it's a very traditional sign. This is not a very traditional building. This is a, a quite contemporary. And I certainly respect your opinion, Phil. You do these all the time. I just, I feel like the aluminum might be a better fit for our building. <coughs> I'm also not going to go down on my sword for it. <laughs> just expressing my opinion. Do we have a glass that we can see besides the one that we have a picture of? Um, I don't know how many of those I have. I, if you uh, give me a moment, I can take a look and see if I can. Okay. Phil, I sent you in an email the one that Dan had sent us, the glass one. Tim Carroll wants to speak maybe in the meantime you wanna. Oh, Carol. Yeah, thank you. Um, I kind of agree that bronze is great, but I don't think it's a the best fit for the building, which is much more modern and light. And I, I do like glass a lot. And the one thing I would add is we're also gonna be getting a lead plaque. And one of the options for those are um, sandblasted glass, which I, I did pull up an image just before the meeting. I, I don't even think I could share if you gave me that option, but I can email it to everyone or whatever. But um, I think that's a much more in keeping with the style of the library look. I think the glass one that was in the images we got in our email looked like it was lettering, I, I, like black or something. But the aluminum's also nice. I'm worried about glass, the, the contrast with glass. <clears throat> Butters would be painted, but those on glass especially can chip and fade over time. It doesn't seem as sturdy. But so if you don't think Phil, if you don't think you're gonna be able to find it. It was sent in an email to all of us. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I remember yeah. 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 I just like that he had different options viewing because originally I agreed that I wanted aluminum but then I liked the bronze but I think glass fits best here too um where is it going to hang again that hasn't been determined okay probably going to be in one of the entryways either yeah. the main street entryway or the so uh, I don't I'm, I'm feeling like because we don't have them okay well <laughs> I just did a search for aluminum and there's an example right there. Here's some similar ones. Um, so in a lot of ways, they are. Yeah, I do. Um, this is so where basically the letters are etched in and then filled with black paint. Jean Wall, do you know what the plaque is at the community center? No, I don't. I 
think it's I, I don't know that. But to uh, me, the Mike, aluminum you, is cleaner looking mm -hmm. than the, the high schools. Yeah. The high schools bronze. Yeah. I don't know. It's a little bit cheaper. Every morning. Mm -hmm. You don't know. I, I think it's. Oh, I don't think I've ever really looked at. It. <laughs> right. I think it's. I know. Now there was the question of timing. Um, and that, you know, we really wanted to move. I don't know so we, we're in the better position right now to even vote on this. And I will say this, is that when the building, when the high school was open, mm -hmm. one, the ribbon cutting was not in front of the plaque. It wasn't mm -hmm. actually on the other side of the building, in the front of the building, the plaque's front entrance and the plaque mm -hmm. is by the mm -hmm. auditorium entrance. And I don't even believe it was off at the time of the opening. Mm -hmm. the so that's why I wasn't overly... Uh, that was why why I wasn't overly concerned with so much with the timing of it. If it had to be like this meeting, we had to vote on it. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, well, you all make good points, but the uh, the bronze is everlasting. It's you, you can't deface it. That's what I like about it. It's most solid. I worry about defacing the glass. <laughs> yep. That can be scratched. Yeah, and aluminum concern. is a softer yeah. metal. Run, definitely. Run is yeah. Forever. Yeah. And we need Ed's name forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, I agree with you. But it's in an area where it could possibly be vandalized. If it's in one of the entryways, eyes may not be on it. Right. Somebody can go by with a key. Mm -hmm. right. In terms of glass, fingerprints. Uh, but I think the Bronze is just much classier looking. It just is really elegant, uh, and it's it's not inside. It's out. It's in the vestibule, so it'll be into of itself in a way. Would aluminum be easier to scratch as well? Um, yeah. yeah, it's a softer metal. Don't it's softer metal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For, personally, I would it, it, I would agree with Ed. Uh, Ed as far as one, it is what it is, and it's a it's a it's a memorial plaque. Um, to memorialize this group and everybody that had involved in the city and, and that type of thing. We're going to have a lot of plaques, obviously. We're going to have a donor wall and, mm. and numerous other things uh, throughout the building. Um, I'm okay with going what has been proposed, uh, but if you don't feel, and we'll have, we can go forward with the vote, vote it, but we have a motion in a second. If it fails, then we go back to the drawing board. And I think it's clear, more of my question was, if we didn't vote it tonight, it's not the end of the world. Well, mm -hmm. I, it may, I just feel like if there's a way to have it there when we open, it would be a good thing to do. Absolutely. And this question has been on the table for six months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm not sure waiting a month is going to get us any, get us any more information to be able to make a final decision. So uh, I would prefer that we... Well, we're going to vote on, on your motion. Oh, you know, I'm just saying if it, okay. if it does pass. <laughs> I'm curious yeah. about the lead time on aluminum versus bronze, because bronze is a cast piece. Aluminum is an etched piece. Mm -hmm. Is the What's the lead time on either option? Um, I, I couldn't even tell you that. I, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be a big, big difference between I, either of them, to tell you the yeah. truth. Okay. Yeah, they're all and I, I will say, we, I've ordered uh, a fair amount of, <laughs> of plaques, trophies uh, <laughs> uh, for the country club, especially after the fire, and none of them take long. <laughs> and some, I know the casting process is some, faster than you. Some that, are, some that were, were expensive and some that were not, and they, they get done pretty, pretty quick. So Dan said to me, he threw out the number six weeks. I don't know. That's probably reasonable. Good. Would think. It depends what we're, yeah, we where it's coming from. from. Yeah. You know, they could mm -hmm. be making a lot of aluminum plaques mm -hmm. on as many bronze. Right. Could you not be three weeks instead of six weeks right. of aluminum? Mm -hmm. so the, pro, the, the, the key here is to get it started. Mm -hmm. Now you'll have a better idea when. So, what we have now on the table is a motion for the bronze, as, as, as um, Phil showed us. Um, <coughs> Just as an aside, Carol did just email an image of sandblasted glass that I have up on my computer if anybody wants to see it. Yes. Well, you'd have to go. She can't put it. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> don't talk. We're <laughs> doing this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. Really. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, if you put this plaque, two cents, if you put it inside the building, mm -hmm. it's. You know, can keep an eye on it. Oh, yeah. 
my word through the glass. But if it's going to be in a public forum, like it's it, mm -hmm. you, you, you're going to, you don't have eyes on it. Right, and that's where you know, like, put I think the sort of right <coughs> into the building would sort of be the quote unquote normal right. thing. Mm -hmm. Carol has her hand up too. Carol, I would just say that that's the same plaque that I believe is at the high school, and um, I, I'm not really worried about vandalism. I don't think it's been vandalized. Plus, it's super thick, and I'm sure it's tempered. So, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I would just throw that out there that I'm I'm. Maybe I'm a little too optimistic, but I don't think that that should be a worry for, for the material. But and I'm fine with aluminum too. I just really don't think bronze is is a good fit. So I won't vote for it if that matters. I'm 100 percent in agreement with Carol. I, I think the glass is best. It looks best. And I think we have so much glass already that it fits really well. Um and I don't think people are going to vandalize it either. And we're going to have security cameras. And, you know, I, I, I'm not worried. And if once the vandalism has taken place, well, you still have to replace it. So, you know, you got to be too. Bronze is not easily defaced. And fingerprint. Who's going to be keeping the fingerprint, uh, cleaning it, and get the fingerprints off of it? That many people are going to be touching it. Well, would anybody no. touch? Well, let's do this. Let's have the vote. Let's ha let's have the vote for the bronze uh, 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 for the motion. And I will say this: is that imagine having a pro building project for uh, nineteen million dollars and having this is probably the longest debate we've had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That going for us. Yeah. Let's add one yeah. more thought. Um, you know, we've we've worked really hard. The furniture, fixture, and equipment. Um, advisory group, we thought a lot, long and hard about the overall aesthetic of the building. And when I mentioned the aluminum versus the bronze, I mean, I know, I don't think it's a matter of classy versus cheap looking. I think it's a matter of an aesthetic for a contemporary building. And I just feel like the, the aluminum in my mind or the glass, I mean, the, what Lisa just showed us is really lovely. I think that's more in keeping with the aesthetic of the building. But again, I'm not going to go on down on my sword for it. I used to be twice, I think you did. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the first time like yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so with the first motion, which is for a bronze plaque, all in favor, you probably should show your, well, you want to do a roll call? Probably should. Okay, we'll do a roll call. <clears throat> all in favor of the bronze, and I'll do a roll call vote. Ed Lynn? Yes. Karen Benson? Yes. Ellen Boyer? No. Carol Collins? No. Doris Cowdery? Yes. Ann Dillon? Tim Farrell? Yes. Annie Moscatolo? No. Fern Smith? No. Gene Wall? No. Okay. No, seven. So the, that motion fails. So the new, do we have a second motion? I would like a motion that we go with the glass. Was that you, you made a motion to go with glass? I did. Okay, is there a second for a motion to go with glass? I will second it. I'll second it. <laughs> okay, so this Carol can give, give, me move second, to, give me a second to get caught up. <laughs> and if you want, do we want to discuss that or just vote? Just vote. What can I, I did, well, or, well, it, well, do we need a motion for aluminum on glass? Is that is painted? No, it's safe. Well, I think that if you don't like glass, then you vote no, and then the next yeah. would be <laughs> by process of elimination. Uh, so, unless someone wants to chisel one. Yeah. <laughs> I know people. I know. Actually, yeah. <laughs> I've done it myself. <laughs> so, uh, tea signs are. <laughs> we got a guy. Yes, give a preference between glass and aluminum. I'd be happy with either one of them. And I'm, yeah. I'm now caught up. Yeah. Okay. So there's a motion from Fern and a second from Carol. I just think glass is risky and we don't want it. We don't need to have a risk here. Um, and that it's much harder to deface the aluminum and glass. People may or may not put their fingerprints on it, but it can easily be scratched. Um, so I would really uh, argue that we should have the aluminum. Okay. Not the bronze. Oh. 
Um, and I, I, thinking about this and just thinking about some of the rather heated emotions around the library, I would certainly hope that no one in this community would do something like that. But, and I know it's tempered glass, but um, I would be concerned about glass. I think I'd probably be in favor of aluminum. Just okay. thinking about it. Okay. So has anyone ever had a car keyed? I, I don't think aluminum is any different than glass. I think you're actually more likely to have aluminum scratched or defaced. I, and there's been high emotions, but I think that it's settled down. And I don't think anybody that had negative feelings about the library is going to come in just to deface a plaque. I hope not. Well, it's funny that you should say that of all people, given what you and I have been through. Um, <laughs> I have faith in the community, and I, I don't see it happening. And if it does, I'm on record, I'll buy a new one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that. <laughs> all right, so it for class. Oh. Oh. Karen Benson. No. Oh, I, yes. Sorry, oh. it looks like Carol was going to say something. Oh. Well, we've no, said it's on another screen looking at aluminum. I'm happy with glass or aluminum. Either okay. one I'm happy with. Okay. Are Carol, we voting on glass? Yeah. We're voting on glass. All right. I'll say yes. Doris Cowdery. No. Ann Dillon. Yes. Tim Farrell. No. Amy Mosquitolo. No. Fern Smith. Yes. Jean Wall. Yes. Five. Okay. Is there another motion? <laughs> we need a motion to do the sign in aluminum. Correct. So. Okay. How about we do this? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? I'm abstaining. Jane. Two yeah. Thank you. So, um, <laughs> now, something like this is what is what folks would like to see. Is that right? We're still going to have the seal of the city and stuff, right? Yeah, that's how, mm -hmm. how to look. Yeah, but this right. is uh, the reason I'm asking is because a couple of different ways to do aluminum, and it sounded like you wanted to do something maybe a little bit more modern um, looking rather than more traditional, and so this is where the letters, and in, in our case, the images are etched out into the surface and then they fill them with paint and then polish it afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So something That's, like this is, yeah. make sure we get the... Mm -hmm. and you want to <laughs> Oh, interesting, you probably can. So um, I have a question. Uh, I know. <laughs> so with the aluminum plaque, you can probably put some sort of plexiglass over it to protect it somewhere. Mm -hmm. So if anything's the face, the glasses, and then just replace mm -hmm. that. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great idea, Mike. Really? Are you being sarcastic? Not me. <laughs> I can't tell. I can't so, tell. We, we, <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to ask Phil, um, when we look at the font for that, can we integrate it with the font that's being used on the room signage and... We just, we've had a lot of conversation about typeface and font in relation to the donor recognition piece. And I just, it would be nice if it's all integrated. Sure. I assume you can probably choose different yeah. fonts. Now, the, um, the fonts that we have for all the room signs in order to comply with the access code need to be pretty simple block letters. Um, mm -hmm. That is not the case when it comes to something like a dedication plaque um, or a donor recognition plaque. So, we basically have block letters, Helvetica or something similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I figured it was probably Helvetica. On their room signs. And do you know what you have on the donor sign? We, that decision hasn't been made yet. No, but we did. I think we want the, the typefaces to be sympathetic and <laughs> complementary with each other. Okay, because what we're showing is um, on this drawing that we, that we showed you earlier was pretty, uh, I think it's just... Helvetica is what's on here. I'm going to try to find it again here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those are the code compliance. 
So is that something that we need to vote on or is that something that a subcommittee will decide? So we, we've, we're just showing a, a like a Helvetica on here. Um, and this is going to be a very similar letter to what is on the room science and the room okay. science, like I said, don't, you don't have any choice. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Uh, I think that's fine. As long as they're, they work together. Okay. If yeah. you can deal with that. In my opinion. Fine. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll end up doing the same thing um, for the plaque then. And of course, we're not going to change any of the fonts that are in the. Clean. It's yeah. clean looking. Yeah. yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So one quick question about location. Do we need to decide or does Phil decide? And when does that have to get done? We um, we have a little bit of time. It's going to be one of those things when they show up to put it in um, is when they'll need that final decision. Um, this is especially given that it's aluminum. It's not going to be very heavy. And you could pretty much put it wherever you wanted. Um so I think that the, the the front vestibule makes the most sense for me, provided that we can give it a, enough room so that it doesn't seem crowded in there. Um, and uh, and the, my second choice would be the, the lobby on the side entrance, and the third choice would be the wall just inside the, the vestibule at the side entrance. Um, when you first walk in those uh, through the second set of doors, immediately on the left-hand side, there's a wall before you get to the glass going into children's. And so it's a possibility you could do it there as well. That'd kind of be my third choice. Everybody know where I mean, or do you? Do I need to pull up a plan or something? I think the, the front entrance seems to make the most sense because that is truly the main entrance to the library. Yes. So when you walk in on the right, you got all that stuff, like fire stuff. Okay. Yeah. But, right. <laughs> That, that's what I mean. If we if, if we can't find a spot where it's going to look like it belongs and it's not just shoehorned in there, then um, then I think that that's well, the wall on the left is empty. Yeah, that, there you go. Then. Okay. Cool. Put it next to the emergency egress plaque. Perfect. Stacked. Perfect. In an emergency, right. call one of these people. <laughs> now we have. The donor wall. Donor wall. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. See those of you there and those of you here. Most of you I know. I'm Jean Canteen. And I certainly hope this decision, decision isn't as controversial as the one we just made. <laughs> you've all received the material. I hope you've all had a chance to look at it, particularly, Ellen, if you can show that in color. Mine is in black and white. Um, that's the proposed donor wall. The committee was made up of uh, some very talented people, some of whom were in the room. And we had members from the building committee, the foundation, the trustees, and the friends. And they all worked very hard. We put out an RFP a few months ago to local artists in the hopes that we would get responses that would be unique to Greenfield. And the good news is we did. We got four responses from local artists and we pretty quickly came down to two of the four as being much more in keeping with the aesthetic, which you've been discussing, of the new library. So we worked closely with the two artists uh, and had them to the library, took them on a tour, showed them the wall. This is the wall. I think you all know the wall that we're talking about putting it on and made sure that it would hang there well and et cetera, et cetera. So after the visits and after some lengthy discussion, we unanimously approved this design and we're very excited about it. Now, why did we choose this design? Well, bees are very much a part of what's going on in the city these days. And that was very much part of our thinking. But even more than that, it's the idea that a hive, a honeycomb is a community event. It, no one bee can make a honeycomb. And that's consistent with the whole building of the library and the way every all the different parties have worked together to make this such a success. And that certainly has been true in the donor recognition and in the foundation work with all of the other piece parts that have come together. Um, so we're very excited about that. Um, the structure conveys um, not only the names of the people who've contributed philanthropically to the project, but it illustrates for future generations the importance of a honeycomb, the importance of working together, and 
Uh, none of us stands alone when we take up the work considering our future. Like honey to the bees, a community can only work when it works together. So that's why we picked this piece. Now, what names will be on the piece? The names will be those folks who have donated $1,000 or more as of March 1st. And if you look at the individual pieces, there will be six to seven names in each of the pieces that have names. Not all pieces will have names because not all parts of the honeycomb have honey in it at any one time. So it, uh, it allows us to have the names in a way that they'll be legible. There will be honey bees also around, five or six bees randomly put on the piece. We've worked with the artist to move them up from this picture. This was their original picture, but we've asked the artist to move them up so there's no actual bee below shoulder length so you can't walk into and get in trouble with the bees. So now we get to the nuts and bolts of the project. The details are all in your packet and I won't go over them all, but just to review the important ones, the overall size is six feet, seven inches tall and eight feet, one inch at its widest point. It will have approximately 66 hexagonal cells with seven or eight donor names listed within each of about half of these cells. Some cells will be open frames, and there will be five to six bees. I talked about the bees, and that's the details. For more details, you can look at your package, but I think that gives you an idea, particularly if you look at how it's going to look on the wall. Um, the artist is the local mother and son they live in Turner's Falls, Nina Rossi and John Bander. Nina works in a wide variety of materials to create her installations. And John Bander has completed several large public art commissions working in metal sculpture. And happily, he's OSHA 10 certified. So he will be able to do the work of installation. And, I think. What? Well, one of the questions that that we talked about was, you know, D.A. Sullivan, because they own the building until the end of the project, they would have to kind of have their hand in who, how installation goes down, who's installing, making sure they're insured, making sure that they're... But it's after June 1st now. We, we can't get this done in time. Oh, okay. Well, then once the building's the city's, then the city can do... And you guys can deal with it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because we, okay. we, we can't get it what? done. We can't get it done in time. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I think it like I'm going to do something. <laughs> but I, get it. I, I will add that the, the RFP for this project contained the information about the, the blocking and requirements for depth and, and, you know, all the safety measures that you would have for hanging it. So they've been, they've been very conscious right. about that. As they've but the city's going to be, and I, mm -hmm. you wanted to ask that question. I, I, I see it's a honeycomb, but how is this honeycomb attached to the wall? The way it's defined in the RFP, and we did go over it with Toby um, and George when we went out and visited. Uh, so if, is there like some Z, Z strips being attached to the wall and this fastens to the Z channels? Uh, Rachel? You want to address I, that? Yeah, I can address that. So um, it's going to have a wood backing, and then the metal be of, of the honeycomb structure will be attached to the backing. The backing will be attached to the wall. And then each of the honeycomb plates will be put in after the honeycomb is, is attached to the wall um, on the day of installation. So you're going to have a piece of plywood attached to the drywall and then these honeycombs will be attached to the plywood individually? No, there's going to be no, a one. Little iron frame that mm. will kind of outline of the honeycomb. Okay. And that will be attached to the piece of plywood. And then- so The plywood's attached to the, to the metal studs. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. And that, then, that, and that's, then that's there'll be substrate. small yeah. plates of, of thinner enameled metal that will be the size of the honeycomb that will set into the metal iron frame of the honeycomb is the frame. Yeah. That's all one big piece. A piece of plywood. Right. And this attests the plywood. So the right. plywood secured mm -hmm. to the wall. So yeah. tapping screws, right. as you mentioned. Yep. Yep. Into the metal stuck. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make sure you bring a nice heavy duty magnet. Right, Rachel? I know magnet. how to get those magnets, Mike. I know oh. where they are. You'll find the stud <laughs> with that magnet. Oh, You'll they actually the did that with the artist. I, this doesn't mean a lot to me, but they did. We stood there and they <laughs> the magnet. With the magnet. If you enough magnet, you will find a metal stud. Yep, yep. They oh, did Mike, do that. I got to get one of those magnets. <laughs> I think I have to give Mike a magnet. <laughs> he really yeah, likes those magnets. Good. The more the discussion is around it, if it's if it's if it was work that was happening while the project was no. still ongoing, then it's DA Sullivan needs to be involved in, in the installation. If once the keys are turned over, then central maintenance is yeah. That. And I am in conversations with George trying to yeah. figure out this stuff. Hopefully okay. before July first. Yep. Hopefully. Mm-hmm. So you want to paint? Then I don't know. Plywood will be painted, right? <laughs> plywood will be painted. Plywood will be painted, Rachel. I do not believe the plywood will be painted, but I'm sure we could request it to be painted. You will not see the plywood. Right. It'll be completely behind the yeah. okay. the cells that are filled in. Yeah. Strategically placed filled in it's, cells. It's, it's plywood. It's, it's sporadic. So I'm not sure if the plywood is going to be behind here. All right. I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh, so the empty cells, the empty the cells without yeah. names that right. appear to be empty right. will still have. You'll see the wallboard behind them. You'll see the wallboard. Yeah. The wall. right. yeah. Right. So the wood is much right. smaller. Right. But you won't see the plywood. No. Yeah. Right. You'll see the wallboard, but you won't see the plywood. Right. So the plywood would be just the filled. Yeah. The plywood okay. would be on so it'll be just cut in that shape to fill in. Oh, okay. To Got it. Be okay. <laughs> I mean, you would have to literally like lay your head against the wall to see yeah. that. They're strategically placing the um, filled-in home, um, but covers up the the plywood too. I mean, it, it, this this was just a mock-up. They've got a lot more to do with it. Got it. Okay. Cool. Thanks for bringing that up, Thompson. Good discussion. All right, um, uh, Amy. Did you want to say something? We got sort of got a. You know, I think you've actually covered everything, Jean. Yeah, we, we, we talked a lot uh, within the group about Lorenzo Langstroth's connection to Greenfield and how significant that has, has been through our history, how significant these have become in our community, and, and that they've really become this thing that has brought the community together. And it's the thing I think one of the things that we really liked about this was it it illustrates the importance of philanthropy for the next generation and how important in, a, in an engaging and memorable way. Like I can see kids, little kids coming in and just being fascinated by this honeycomb and remembering it and remembering it as they grow up and, and understanding that it was the community that built this building. It was these important and not just these important donations. These donations are the ones that are appearing on the recognition plaque, but every single gift counts. And it was the community that brought it together. This is the representation of that and the manifestation of that, that effort from everyone in the community. Yes. Yeah. Doris, do you know have something? Else? I do. I, I was part of that committee as well. And um, it was, this was such a carefully done decision. And from my perspective, it's absolutely beautiful. And I think it will enhance our library immensely. And I'd love to see my fellow building committee members just give a huge thumbs up uh, to it. So I move that we accept, we support this project. Okay. Just a second, please. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you all for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jean. And have a good day. Good evening. Should we pass over the artist or someone to make a statement that kind of explains that rationale of the community? Because I think that could get You mean on the. I don't know who I don't know the artist is going to have the Actually, on the. Yeah, just like a little. That's. Well, it's yeah. for a little black there. Maybe that's what we'll yeah. say on it. Okay, nice little explanation. Because, yeah. you know, well, mothers might not know the importance of the black house. Yes, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I know. But. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, Thank thanks. Silver. Okay, now we're on to presentation from Laura for the... Mm-hmm. Artwork. Yes. 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 Yes.
Um, I'm the chair of the Proverbs Public Research uh, Library in Yay. Yeah. Um, and I just want to give All right, can you yeah. move up to the table so oh, that yeah, can hear you? Yes, we can. So I'm going to give a quick overview of how we uh, kind of basically how we did it. And then Laura is going to give you some nitty gritty details. Um, so uh, we assembled a committee of jurors um, that included Phil, designer, uh, a member of the library staff, a member from the Greenfield High Art Department, the DPW, and a member of the public. And um, all of the... Uh, all of the submissions, there were 11 submissions, all of the submissions went through a process, um, uh, through a rubric, where they were given points for various categories, and Laura will talk about that in more detail. And they needed to make a B, essentially, grade B. They needed to make 80% before they moved on to the next round, which would be us actually looking at the projects. That was for the artists. Did the artists meet these specifications? Um, only seven of those artists made it to the next round. Um, and then the, uh, the, the projects were looked at separately and uh, had to meet uh, the same kind of points standard um, to be considered. So uh, in the end, uh, we were only able to uh, forward three projects, all of which we really liked, but only three of the 11 submissions were forwarded for a final recommendation. Um, and Laura will talk a little more about the specifics of how that happened. Sure. Um, as Caitlin mentioned, we did receive submissions from 11 artists. They were thorough and, and well received. They did a great job. The problem being is we needed to rate this because even though people do a great job at submitting things, we can't every for everyone so um the things we looked at were resumes references actual nuts and bolts and um as caitlin mentioned we were only able to put forward seven artists um of and as we went into the project summary portion of it where um everybody was looking at the projects, some people um, put in for several different projects, but if they weren't qualified, they weren't, we weren't able to choose them. We rated them. If anybody's interested in that, we could, yes. So would you liken this a little bit to how Amy and Doris looked at the subcontractors? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, like so yeah. as you yeah. know, I mean, obviously okay. art is you know, mm -hmm. and those kind of things, but we tried to be fair and equitable and move things over. So we do have all those numbers, obviously. Um, but in the project categories, we, as Caitlin mentioned, we are able to put forward three projects, the two bike racks, the one in the front of the building, and the one in the back, basically. And then the, um, the frosted applique wall on the children's area, class wall. Um, that's the copies you have in front of you. These are guarded statements, and then the pictures of what they're planning. Right, and it, it's a little hard to tell from these drawings, but so there are two drawings of the bike racks which each have seven different images. So that's seven separate bike bike racks which you can put two bikes on each that go in parallel to each other in a line. And they can be a little bit staggered so it looks like a grove of trees or a flock of birds. Very right. cool. Yes. Sorry, and did we get these emailed to us? I didn't oh, see. Oh, I'm sorry. Great. Yeah. Great. Right. Wait, where's the camera? Right, right there. there. Yeah, can you <laughs> that work? Yes, perfect. Thank you. So this is the trees. Okay, so there's seven different iterations mm -hmm. of trees. And these, bag, they look kind of small, but they're about, they're about like this. They're mm -hmm. very, pretty big. And they can be powder coated. And we, um, we thought we could specify, we can still ask the artist for modification. So the artist in, intended them to be black, but we thought it might be nice if we chose colors 
It says, um, and then the other one is birds. Mm, see that? And there are a few modifications that we thought might be good to improve these just a little bit too. Um, but there's an owl. And then there's some other birds. So there are seven different ones, and they would be in that staggered line um, like this, mm -hmm. okay. parallel to each other. So is one designated for the front? So one Correct. So the trees were meant to be in the front, and the birds are meant to be in the back. Yes. The front. What's that? Can I see the trees one more time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, you, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like the flourish. <laughs> the trees and the birds are both bike racks? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. One is a set for the front and one is a set for the back. So all of those would be in the yes. front for the trees? Yeah. And all of the tree ones would be in the front, yeah. And what are they made out of? Um, they're made from um, rod, I think. Or like pipe, metal. bent metal pipe. pipe. Mm -hmm. Bent metal pipe. Mm -hmm. So they should be very solid. Schedule 40 steel pipe. Yep. Thank right. You. And then it has there the size is uh, 36 to 45 inches tall and 32 to 4 inches wide. It's the same yeah. stuff that we would use to make exterior handrails. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I really need to look at them one more time as a person that used to ride bikes a lot in the city. I don't understand how things are going to lock to it. So well, do you get there? So um, they are, uh, they are not solid figures, right? So it's just the outline. So you lock, you put your lock through the center of the bird or the center of the tree. You know what I'm saying? So that double line you're seeing, Fern, is the outline of the pipe. The right. So pipe. this here is the pipe, and this is open space. The body of the bird is open air. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so how tall are they, and how big is They're that? They're 36 space? to 42 inches tall. Uh, sorry, wide and 36 to 45 inches tall. They're big. They're pretty big. Mm. And solid. I mean, it's, it's a little bit hard to, I understand, to tell the scale from the image. But so they're about, you know, this big. And like Phil was saying, it's a beefy pipe. Mm -hmm. One of the things we were talking about making as a change was some of the birds here are designed to sit straight on the ground, like right here. And we thought they might work better if they all had this little leg that lifts them up a little. Mm -hmm. yep. But they should all be really solid. And the idea is that a bike could go on each side, one bike okay. on each side. Mm -hmm. So two things. So the art that was supposed to be the dinosaur bike rack didn't close. All yeah, the these close. The, yeah, mm -hmm. oh, we believe me, we discussed the dinosaur bike rack. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. So all of these close and are they an adequate size to fit adult bikes and children bikes? And, yeah. yes. and you and you lost the briefs. Like, so I don't see, I can't think of any lock that they wouldn't, that wouldn't work with. Do you agree, Phil? Mm. Yes, these are going to be very similar to, um, to a, an open loop or a U-shape or a circle. Okay. Um, okay. They're, they're going to work very similar to one of those kind of standard kind of rolled pipe shapes, uh, except that these, in this case, the, the, the pipe is rolled into a kind of an artistic shape, mm -hmm. uh, but they'll work the same the same as that, they're tall enough and wide enough that I think you can, you'll be able to, if you wanted to lock up your rear wheel in the in the right. in this in the up and down pipe, uh, you can. If you wanted to lock it across the horizontal pipe on a men's bike, a, a ten speed or something like that, you can do that. If you wanted to take the front wheel off and lock them all up together, you can do that. It, it'll work just like one of those U shape or circle shape. Yeah, they were given. In fact, in the RFQ, they were given images of those bike racks that Phil is talking about. So they were meant, they needed to be something that would replicate that system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these, the, this, for your, for your benefit, the, this design of, of the ones that submitted for bike racks was one of my favorites. So Phil, mm -hmm. do they need to have two legs hanging down at the bottom to be able to connect the way? 
they, uh, they connect should, to the ground. You could get actually connect it with a single point, um, mm -hmm. and but in both, in both of these cases, they they are either is a pipe that runs right along the ground, or there are two different points. Uh, one of the things that that we all thought as a group is the ones that had a little leg to stand them up off the ground to keep mm -hmm. the kind of dirt and leaves from kind of catching underneath. Mm -hmm. them. Um, keep the water away from them and so forth seem like it would work better. Um, and I think that that makes sense. And that you would, would recommend be... having those legs on the third one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what yeah. they said. Yeah, they would basically add. Right, case, right. Uh, Almost like little, yeah, yeah. little birdie legs. Yeah, little birdie legs. Yeah. But there's a very common uh, bike rack. Um, I'm sure you all are aware of the U shape where mm -hmm. two, the two legs of the U connect into the ground. There's also another very common one that um, has a single leg with a circle at the top made out of pipe. And it really just has a single point of connection down the ground. Yeah. Either, both of those things work. And I think if that was the case, it would work fine. But I think what we're looking at here is they almost all, I think, had two points of connection, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the trees do for sure. And then um, the birds, we were going to talk to the artist about small modifications. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to just ask you mm -hmm. aware of that. They're very cool. I think they're very how, cool. How long <laughs> would it take for them to do this? Four months. Sorry? Four months lead time. Now, of course, we would talk to the, if we choose this, we would talk to the artist and see if that could be expedited. Of course, discuss colors and the, mm -hmm. you know, the lake situation mm -hmm. and those kind of things. There, that doesn't seem to be um, out of the ordinary for what are you thinking about in terms of color? Oh, or you had your choice? Yeah, we were thinking that you guys might want to uh, think about that, or it's certainly the committee that did all the aesthetic work. Mm -hmm. I okay. think Phil should be able to weigh in on mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Phil was part of this committee, too. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I can tell you one of my suggestions for the trees is that they were seven different shades of green um, and to kind Love of. Love that idea. Yeah. 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 A, a, a variety of colors for birds, even if they don't really represent the type of bird. I mean, you're not going to find a candy apple red owl, but I think it might look, it might be fun if they were, yeah. you know, Maybe different even colors a back for children. Oh, like your glasses. Right. <laughs> the bird bike rack is back yeah. 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 Towards towards the children. The, right. Yeah. 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 Nice depth colors. That's yeah. Yeah. Like fun. That's yeah. Can I ask just one technical question? How far apart will they be mounted? It's a 10 foot space right the yeah, bike we, rack is a 10 the, foot space yeah and i think that um <coughs> excuse me the way we laid them out was based on the manufacturer's recommendations for the standard u-shape and i don't recall uh -huh. what that is but it's like two feet between them or something like that we, uh -huh. okay. we'll uh we'll confirm that with the manufacturers because this is basically the same as a u-shape um uh -huh. and, we're, and we're trying to get the ability to serve up to two bikes on either side right we'll, we'll double check uh -huh. and make sure we have those dimensions for you uh -huh. Make it really Thanks. usable. Yeah. Which is, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they close. We we learned. <laughs> <laughs> well, we learned, right? <laughs> and so, yeah, so if no one has questions about the bike racks, you can say that the other project that we put forward was the, um, the frosted applique on the glass wall for the children. Um, and again, we know that there are concerns about sight lines. So we want to double check about sight lines and then the artist could be asked to adjust adjust the layout or where things are in terms of where the necessary sight lines might be. Mm -hmm. okay, well, is, um, is, this gonna, is it gonna be a, a dark background with this white? Or no, the glass is clear. The, the black part is clear. That's what I thought, okay. And then the rest is like a okay. negative, yeah, yeah. yeah, frosted. Here. You wanna oh. see the, oh yeah. You know I like to do Carol now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, so it's, it has no color and it has no um, like boxes of variegation in the makes sure you know, or how it represents. So it depends for Yeah, good, good. There's a couple of details actually. Caitlin's good at this. Huh? Mm -hmm. Excellent. She does a little bit of the girl, right? It's <laughs> well. Black is clear. It's clear. Why are you frosted? Okay, this is frosted. So we thought this was really nice. It so it's, 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 has like a a childlike sense of play, but without being too childish. Mm -hmm. right. So even for people that are on the outside, not in the kids' room, it's still kind of a nice, lovely yeah. image. Right. How, how, how high up? Excuse me. 
Sure. The donor wall beehive, mm -hmm. you just hop over and go in one by the tree. Oh, sure. <laughs> well, I was actually going to ask if maybe we could ask them to put some bees in. Uh, oh, well, a couple of you probably could. You know, probably at that, could. At that yeah. end. How high up does this go? Uh, this is the whole wall. That was the full wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This second right here shows that it's the whole mm -hmm. wall. Yep. And, you know, oh, okay. the artist is willing thing. to work with mm -hmm. probably Phil's group to, and the library staff to adjust mm -hmm. line of sight, safety concerns, things like that, because it'll, until you're in it, you don't know like, oh my gosh, that deer is right in the middle of where I need to be seeing. Mm -hmm. right. so, sorry, can you explain which part is etched again and which one is plain? Glass. The 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 um, black part of the image it represents the glass itself, so clear. And then the white silhouettes are just that. It would be like a frosted silhouette. It's a negative, right? And it's a white frosted. It's not right. It's not colored or anything. It's just white frosted. And then this is just you're seeing into the room. Where it's black, you're just actually seeing mm -hmm. through the glass. The purple, the orange that oh, makes that version the best. Yeah. One. Can I ask a question? Has has the children's staff seen these yet or not? Francesca was on the was on yeah. The Francesca committee. was on the committee. Yeah. Okay. Right, but Francesca's yeah. not. She's a teen. teen. Yeah, she's right. teen. But she you know. shared it. She shared all of them. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, with the children's mm -hmm. partner, happy just to make sure that mm -hmm. you guys weren't looking at anything. That they they really didn't want. Yes, they they are happy. This was one of the ones that they approved. Mm -hmm. Nice, good, nice. That makes them better. <laughs> it seems like a Christmas picture to me. Yes, it does feel. I'm it's not like, it's like, like a winter, winter wonderland. Yeah. Yeah. Although it's yeah. noted yeah. as yeah. Yeah. neighborhood, we see. I think that's what the artist calls it. It may not come across like that. But that was my. I think yeah, that maybe because, because it's because white. the trees are bare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, uh, yeah, I, I agree. It's look like that. And the and the pine trees are pretty dominant. Yeah, but I again, this I is really love it. This is something I think the artist is willing to work with too. Like, if we ask them, could they take out one of the pine trees, you know, or something like that? Like, if we think that there's an adjustment we can make that makes it less wintry. I mean, I see kind of what you mean because this kind of iconography has been used a lot like mm -hmm. the last 10 years for Christmas stuff. Christmas cards. Um, <laughs> but I also think, like Phil said, I think part of it is just because it's a silhouette and we're used mm -hmm. to seeing that kind of thing in, in Christmas decor. Mm -hmm. But it does have all kinds of creatures here that should not be out in the winter in Massachusetts. <laughs> they must survive. <laughs> Dragonflies. So, but saying that, like in all seriousness, yeah. that is actually a really good educational component for the children's room because parents and the, the children's librarians can have these conversations with kids about what they're seeing um, right. on the glass. So it does look like there's some leaves. Yes. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't come out and uh, pop out initially. And I do think, you know, when this is full yeah. size, right. those things yeah. that are super, super subtle on this image yeah. are going to be much more right. obvious. So that ends up mm -hmm. making it slightly less, more like spring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like buds spring. coming out. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. That's actually what you called it, the neighborhood in spring. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. yeah, it's just a little hard to imagine since it's the reverse. We're looking at the reverse. Yes. And it's like very tiny. <laughs> it's going to be much. So, yeah. So, floor to ceiling? Like right all the way up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a whole glass. That's wall. huge. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like it's huge, massive. On the What's back of yours, by twenty to twenty eight. Right. Yeah, and if you look at the details. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, the other side. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how yeah. it. So it's on. basically going to dominate the first floor. No, because it's, no. it's layers in in, and it's going to be real subtle. Yeah. I don't know if you guys remember. The image Phil shared with us the first time he showed us interiors. I didn't even notice that, that it was it. on the wall. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until he said, and you might want to take a look at the <laughs> trees on this. Like, whoa, there it is. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and when you're seeing the children's room behind it, 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 it makes this much more subtle because you're yeah. seeing all the walls, yeah. furniture, all of the, mm -hmm. all the color yeah. of the yeah. room paint. You know, yeah. 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 bring like colors. 
I, I think you've done an outstanding job. Thank you. Yeah. I actually, I agree with you. Totally. Yeah. So do people want to Me vote? Me too. So that's the design. Vote together or separately? Separate. Separate. Okay. Carol? Yeah. I'm sorry, but I thought there were three different items or the birds? Yeah, two, one by, set of bike racks is one item. One set of bike racks is the other item. So the trees is one item, the birds is one item, and the glass wall is the third item. Got it. Mm -hmm. I do, it, I don't know if anybody wants to see, but I, I think the birds are going to look kind of like this, right? Oh, Oops. that's not working. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Very helpful. Bird bike racks out there. So. <laughs> so can we get a motion on the trees? So moved. Uh, second. second. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor of the trees? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Perfect. Uh, can we get a vote on the birds? So I moved. Oh, you go ahead. There you go. I'll do it. Amy, yeah. second for me. Yeah. Um, any further discussion? No. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. All right. Cool. Wait a minute. We're not seeing everybody on the screen. So we're not seeing Fern and Carol. I mean, oh, yeah. Carol, we can see you because you you could share your screen or Phil. You that's Phil, I think. Yeah, that, that's me. That's I, I found uh, an image to kind of give you an idea about what the what the white on mm -hmm. glass might look like. And this right. is I found something that's got trees in it. And I thought it'd give you an idea about and how frosted it is and how transparent it is. Is there's options on on the different mm -hmm. right. materials yeah. that, that you can have it more or less opaque. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But definitely Ellen should weigh in on that. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think we're not thinking towards the white end. I think we're thinking toward the more subtle mm -hmm. end. Yeah. 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 We did the trees, right? We did, we did the, the trees. Okay. So can we get... Uh, now it's the frosted applique on glass. All right, can we get a motion for that? Moved. Ellen, second, and um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Extensions. <laughs> oh, Fern. I do Fern not is opposed. Yet. I'm sorry. I think Which, it's the glass wall. Yeah, it's going to be too busy and too too much. Okay. Hope um, wrong. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so you, well, I think if you're know less uh, dominant with your etching, like a, a paler, yeah, like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, more transparent. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's yeah. right. It's example. still oh, that is wall an example. is really big, and it, it is going to dominate the design. Of Karen, you said what that looks like though. That's it's yeah. very subtle. Yeah, that's so it's a much lighter. Yeah. Where's that? My wife. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, please, Karen. Who is talking? Me or somebody else? Oh, that wall, that glass space is huge. I mean, it's it, the, it really it, it, you know, even without being etched, it dominates the whole first floor. So just like I think that's you know what has to be kept in mind with the artwork. If if it's, if you you know talking about a modern building, but then you have this sort of childish, somewhat childish artwork. It's going to influence the floor, first floor. So I like it, but I think it should be as almost as pale as you can possibly make it and still be you know, visible and do yeah. what it's supposed to do. Well, and as I said, too, we can talk to the artist about some modifications. Take out a tree, move something over here, move something like that. But, but I right. work right. with the artist mm -hmm. right. and with the right. staff to right. make sure. Because the sight lines is portion yeah, is an I issue. So I do like the linearness of it, though. So, like Burn, that. did you have a question or comment? No, I just, I really like the simple things that are here. I think the other one's too busy. I, I love the idea. So if the artist can simplify it and make it not feel cheesy, I, I you know, to me, and maybe I'm not seeing it right because I don't have it in front of me, right? So I also think that it, when, you, when it's all compacted into this little eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, it does make it seem busier. I, it's, I'm not saying there isn't a lot going on, but I think when it's larger in size and life size, and I, I mean, I'm not on this committee, but to me, I think it's important to have something on the kid's room wall that kids are going to enjoy. And I don't think they're going to be super psyched about playing trees. And, and I think... Well, I think that you, you would rather have people coming in and looking at the wall than looking at the children for their safety. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that it's this is a screening thing also for the child, protection of the children. 
That's a good point. Yeah. 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 Good that is a good point. Can I, 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 Yeah, I think we voted. Yeah, we already voted. So, so this is a question, I guess. I just mention one other quick thing because we this came up when we were looking at some of the FF and E things. There's a snake in here, and personally, have come to really embrace snakes in my gardens. <laughs> but but we looked at it actually in a couple of places, and and there is a real phobia about snakes. I mean, there can be a phobia about. Bees or owls or birds or, birds or, birds or whatever. Or bees. Yeah, or bees. Yeah, bees. Yeah. Yeah. More so almost than snakes. So yeah. this is something I think that out there. Yeah, we saw that wallpaper. You know, like, I we had some wallpaper that had yeah, basically snakes. So okay, we've all we've already voted to approve mm -hmm. it. How are we going to finalize this? Uh, changes are going to get made. Mm -hmm. Who is going to find, uh, make the final approval? I like what Laura said. If that's even possible, that you guys work with Phil and and Ellen and the staff, and you know, you sort out the fine details. Mm -hmm. I think I'm giving you the go ahead. That would be my take tonight. Yeah. And then you know. All right. So everybody's good with that. We don't. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, I have there. There are two other things. One was this, the hanging sculpture, which obviously we can do without for now. But the other was the mural in the Internet Cafe and the metal benches in the kids' patio. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen now with those? Well, no. uh, we did not put forward anyone qualified and of a higher high enough point level of what they put forward for the projects to give you a recommendation for anything right now but they just didn't meet the brief you know what what was requested to be submitted was not what was submitted right so, you so that again or um, ultimately i think that's probably up to you so the options are we can go out again i will as an aside just say that i and Christian LaPlante, who's working in the Community Economic Development Department, are about to start some training. Greenfield got a grant for training on how to write um, calls for art. Mass uh, currently, art has to go through the 30B process, which is not really meant for artists, it's meant for widgets and mm -hmm. things like that. So um, uh, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council out of Boston is helping train people to do calls for art that is more artist friendly supposed to end that training by the end of April. So the timing isn't great, but there's a possibility that we could write a better RFQ because we're going to be able to do it a different way legally that would attract a better response. The other option is there are some very nice, for instance, for benches, Carol can tell you, Carol has a, a wonderful bench supplier that did the benches at the Fisk Avenue Pocket Park. You know, there's mm -hmm. always the possibility for buying mm -hmm. off the rack, but really nice mm -hmm. Benches, for instance, well, not, not, not the mural, the but like building. for the for the actual so furniture. It seems as though we should probably do that with the benches because I, if, we could wait with the mural or a hanging mm -hmm. thing. But mm -hmm. we could, I think we sense. probably should work, wait for the mural because that's going to be also a big impact, and you want. Yes. Yeah. No. We got. You have to add that for the pieces of art. I personally, I would recommend waiting until we can do another yeah. call. But I think. For the benches, I, I mean, I kept going back to thinking about my 87-year-old mother, who is a regular customer at the library, and how she needs regular benches that have arms, you know, that would get up and down. The benches in the kids area. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, but there are a lot of grandparents take their kids to the library. So I just mm -hmm. want to get something going so that we can get them in there. Mm -hmm. So Carol has some ideas, and mm -hmm. Phil is obviously our designer. Mm -hmm. Can those two work together to come up with something? I, I don't know if I can work with Phil. No, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not working with That's Phil. <laughs> I got another That's appointment. I, I got to go. Excellent. Well done. Can I just add maybe one to two things based on what Caitlin just said? The bench that we have, because it was an AARP grant that paid for it, they're actually called age friendly benches. So there is a whole um, design so that they are usable for everyone. And then there's also this amazing artist who did, I, the first thing I searched for when this RFP went out was whimsical benches and up mm -hmm. to, of all places, Springfield MGM. So maybe we can just have a covert operation at night, but <laughs> it's, it, it's the coolest thing. And it's like, and he's done, it's a Danish artist, but he's done 
tons of installations all over the country. They're so fun. They're like little roller coasters. And so I can, I, I would be willing to get in touch and see about pricing on that or, you know, talk to Phil. So why don't you just at least work with Phil and then present something for us for the next meeting? Does that make sense? Is that? If that works for you. Yep. Good idea. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And then the mural is going to wait. And, and the hanging piece. Thing will wait. So we're all good then. So yeah. thank you for your, your work. And you really came out. Yeah, with thanks a bunch of you guys. Great. Really. Wow. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I can't wait. Um, good. Quite good. Nice. Is there yeah, anything else? I think the bike racks are going to be. Yeah, they're going to be cool. Yeah, they look so exciting. Quite so exciting. I might tell them that. Just a lot of Is there anything else? I think Amy's got a motion, though. I'm it's, poor Fern is trying to get back in, but oh. It, oh, it's okay. I'm trying to get her in, and I can't get her in. I move me adjourn. Second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Wait. Fern? No. No. I we're think good. Carol was saying I. <laughs> All right. We're done. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Give me a run. I'm sorry. Oh, Phil is the host. That's why I couldn't see Phil. Uh, right. so you have to end the meeting, actually. I tried to let uh, I tried to let Mike Fern back in. Yeah. Um, you have to you have to end the meeting. Bye, Fern. Okay. Bye, Fern. Bye, Fern. Yeah. Go ahead and end the meeting. All right. You have to end it.